Hello and welcome to this new Starfield video. Today we're diving into a critical topic concerning Starfield, interplanetary travel. If you're uncertain about how to journey from planet to planet or system to system in Starfield, you're in the right place. We'll be covering all the information available on this topic. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and show some love. And if you're interested in even more Starfield content, whether it's news or guides, you're in the right spot. Consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell to ensure you don't miss any upcoming videos. Interplanetary travel is a subject I often see being discussed in my comments and online in notice boards. Recently, this discussion has resurfaced especially after Pete Hines, the head of publishing at Bethesda, held a Q&A at Gamescom. In it, he mentioned he rarely travels directly from one planet to another. Instead, he typically uses the gravitation jump, which is Starfield's version of the fast travel feature. But does this mean that we can't fly from planet to planet? I can't give you a definite answer on that. However, within a solar system, it's quite possible that you can travel between planets. But to be honest, it may not make much sense to do so. The travel time would be incredibly long with little to no activity occurring during the journey unless you happen to come across a random event. Given this, the graph jump seems to be a much more logical choice. However, at the end of the day, there will always be a few individuals who might opt to travel the long way. I can't confirm whether direct interplanetary travel is an option in Starfield, but we can certainly explore how interplanetary and interstellar travel has been portrayed in the game. Let's take a closer look at the segment from the Starfield Direct that covers this. What's the plan, Captain? This is your star map. It starts with the planet you're currently on. You can see all of its info and resources. You can choose a landing spot or fast travel to known locations. Backing out further, you can view all the planets in the system. Obviously, the game is big, and it's here you can see planets that have key locations, missions, or life on them, versus the many planets that are barren but resource heavy. Zoom out even further to see all the systems in this part of the galaxy. Here, you can plot a course to ones that are light years away. This uses your ship's grav drive to fold space and jump to these systems. And you will need to upgrade your ship and skills if you want to jump to the most distant ones. But for now, we'll plot a course to the Alpha Centauri system where we can find the city of New Atlantis. Alright, that wraps up this segment from the Direct. Now let's dive deeper, dissecting and analyzing each detail. Starting off, we have the star map, which can be accessed through this panel in our spaceship or quite likely with a simple button press. Currently, we're located on the moon named Porima 4C, which orbits the planet Porima 4 within the Porima solar system. On the left side, we get all the relevant information about the planet. First and foremost, what percentage of it have we explored? By studying its flora and fauna, we can research up to 100% of a planet. We can also determine whether it's a rocky or a gaseous planet. The data presents us with the planet's gravity, temperature and atmospheric composition. Additionally, insights about the magnetosphere are available. We can see the amount of flora and fauna available for exploration and ascertain if the water is drinkable or, as is the case here, contaminated by radioactivity. We also receive details about all the resources found on the planet. By the way, these can be displayed with a simple button press, allowing us to then land in areas where specific resources, like iron for instance, are abundant. With another button press, we can select any point on the planet to instantly travel and land. Alternatively, you can choose one of the known points of interest on the planet for your destination. Taking off and landing on a planet always occurs through a cutscene, so you won't manually steer through the planet's atmosphere. The game takes care of the landing and takeoff for you. Let's zoom out a bit on the star map to view the entire system. The sun of the respective system is, of course, at the center with all its planets and their moons in orbit around it. Solar systems come with certain level prerequisites. As we can see in the top left corner, the Parima system recommends a level of 30. 
Below all planets, represented by the large circles, and their moons, the smaller circles above, are visible. In this case, there are six planets with 15 moons. If a planet is highlighted in green, there is a mission waiting for you there. It gets truly fascinating when we zoom out further on the star map. We can then visualize the section of the galaxy we currently reside. On the left panel, we're provided with details about the selected star system, in this case, Porima. By the way, all the large white dots you observe represent star systems already discovered. All the red dots denote undiscovered star systems. From here, we can select the new star system we wish to travel to, like Vol 2, which has a level requirement of 5. On the left, we can gather all relevant information about this system. For instance, Vol 2 comprises 6 planets with a total of 5 moons. And on the right side, we get all the necessary travel data. We can observe that the dominant faction in this region is the Free Star Collective. Moreover, we can see that it only takes a single jump from Porima 4C to Wall 2 Alpha because our ship's maximum jump range is 20 light years. The distance to Wall 2 Alpha is precisely 14.884 light years, meaning a single jump will suffice. Below, we can also see the amount of cargo we're carrying. Based on our total weight and the travel distance, we can determine the amount of fuel needed for the jump. Next, we select Linnaeus 2 as our travel destination. At first glance, it doesn't seem much farther. However, that's misleading as the star map is three-dimensional. This means Linnaeus is positioned much deeper in terms of the z-axis. As a result, we need not just one, but four jumps, since the distance to Linnaeus 2 spans a whopping 73.519 light years and our ship can only cover 20 light years per jump. Additionally, we can see that undertaking this journey would deplete all our fuel resources. We have 50 units available, but these four jumps would require 58.6 units. The color of the lines on the star map also indicates which parts of the route have been explored. White lines mark familiar routes, while red lines indicate uncharted territories. Furthermore, a bold red banner on the right serves as a cautionary note. Hence, it's safe to assume this journey could be dangerous. But for now, let's jump into the Alpha Centauri system, which is only 43.738 light years away. This means it can be comfortably reached with just three jumps. With a simple button press, you activate the gravitational jump and then a brief cutscene follows, landing you in the new system. As this system belongs to the United Colonies, your ship undergoes a smuggling check. Once cleared, you can now land on the planet. You can do this either through the star map or, as I noticed in another segment of the Direct, directly during the flight. Amidst a firefight, it's evident that there is a marker for New Atlantis on planet Jemison. But that's about it. That's all the information one can extract from the Direct's footage concerning interplanetary flight. As to whether you can truly fly between planets within a system, spending 30 to 60 minutes or even more, I'm uncertain. Unfortunately, I can't provide an answer to that. We'll likely need to wait for the reviews, which should be out quite soon. I hope you enjoyed and found this video informative. If so, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Otherwise, I wish you all an awesome day and I'll catch you in the next one.